our friends from uh, Facebook um, on stage after Twitter. That's a good one. I, I think I can see David Kirkpatrick over there, who has uh, um, an awesome conference called Techonomy that you should uh, check out and go to if you can. I think the last one was in Arizona. And, um, um, and David, I've been trying to get here in Paris for years, so I'm really happy David has uh, joined us. And with him, we have Peter Deng, who is the uh, Director of Product Management of Facebook. Uh, Peter and David, please join me on stage. It's great to have you, David. Merci beaucoup. Mais avec plaisir, tu parles français, je ne savais pas. Hello, Peter. Tu, tu parles français aussi Un petit peu. Un petit peu. Welcome. <coughs> All right. Okay, well, thank you to Louis. Um, okay, so Peter Deng up here with me is uh, one of the top product guys at Facebook. He is responsible for what they call at Facebook the Com Apps, which actually refers to pretty much all the applications that operate on Facebook that are owned by Facebook. The most famous one really being uh, Photos, or the original one, and of now all the messaging apps, which are a huge focus of his interest, as you will discover. Yep. Um, I also think it's interesting you call them Com apps because it sort of says a lot right there in the name. Mm -hmm. um, you've been at Facebook since? Uh, 2007. What, what month? Uh, July. July of 2007. Yeah. So he's one of these guys you're starting to say, why is he still there? Um, but uh, you can tell, you'll, you'll hear why he's still there. He's, he's not uh, the slightest bit disengaged. Um, and uh, I don't know if Loic said it, but I did write a book about Facebook, so I have somewhat more of an intense point of view on it than some people. I, I think you might know more about Facebook than I do. Well, I know a lot about the history, and maybe we'll get to some of those things in reference. But, you know, one of the things that's really big about what's been happening with Facebook um, in the last few months, and maybe I, you can tell me for how long, is mm -hmm. a sort of fundamental shift to mobile. Yeah, that's so correct. How fundamental is it? It's, it's actually pretty big. So um, we have basically taken all of our product teams in the way that we do engineering and just shifted them completely to be a mobile-first company. And what that means is that every one of the teams, the photos team, the messages team, the ads team, uh, we all take care of our own mobile products now. Uh, that means that the people who love photos, who love messages, who just wake up thinking about that, um, we're just thinking about mobile first. And all the features that we're building now, we think about what does it mean for these phones in our pockets and how do we make the best possible experience on that first and then we'll learn from that and then bring it to the web. So it's really just kind of turned our development philosophy on its head. Um, at the same time, we're still deeply investing into the, the web side of things, uh, but we've gone native in a lot, of, uh, a lot of ways. So from here on in, pretty much every piece of fundamentally new functionality on Facebook will show up on mobile first, or That's else correct. in both places at the same time. But That's right. It will never show up on the desktop, laptop arena and not on mobile. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say never, but, uh, but, the, the, but that's largely true. That's right? the goal. That, that's the goal. And we're yeah. designing all the things that every single you know, screen that we draw up when we're conceiving a new feature, it's always in this rectangle that looks kind of like this, and we kind of fill it in. It's all on the mobile phone first. And you said, I think, earlier when we were talking that one, from your point of view, that shift is as big of a deal as launching platform, which was one of the great moments in Facebook's history. I, I, I think so, because um, what we've done is we've taken these technologies that we've built, like so there's the desktop, the laptop, and the mobile phone. Um, they actually are, have different sort of affordances, right? So if you think about you know, the desktop, you literally kind of sit in front of it, and you're kind of tied to that machine. Whereas these computers that are in our pockets now, they are different. They're fundamentally different. They're always on, unlike a laptop. They're always with you. I mean, people take them to, you know, to bed, and it's right by your bedside. That's how I use. That's where the alarm that I use now. Um, and they're always logged in as you, right? And so, they're, and 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 the lastly, they're always they're also interruptive, which means that they are able to buzz your pants, as I like to say. Um, and that's fundamentally different than what a desktop or a laptop can do. So we have to consider um, how these affordances affect the types of features that we built. And so we chose to uh, focus a lot on messaging as a, as a result. And you were telling me that affordances is a word that's used a lot in oh, so computer it, sci psychology yeah, interaction. Yeah, so, so human-computer interaction, this idea of uh, affordance is uh, what does the, 
engineered object, what does it kind of naturally lend itself to do? So right. for example, uh, the handle of a hammer affords just gripping it a certain way. Yeah. Um, and so uh, by taking advantage of what the phones are naturally meant to do, uh, We've, we've changed the way we divide. Would you say, I mean, and I want to quickly migrate to this, this, this top, immediate topic sure. at hand, but would you say that in general the internet industry has viewed mobile historically, and perhaps this applies also to Facebook, as more a smaller version of what they had on the desktop? I mean, that would seem to me to be the case. And you're saying now Facebook, at yes. least, is fundamentally thinking differently about that's, that. That's correct. I think I wouldn't say a lot of people do, but there are companies out there that think of the mobile site as a scaled-down version with less functionality, right? Yeah. Um, but when we take a look at the, the mobile uh, affordances, we think, well, how do we take advantage of push notifications to get people timely information, right? Um, and yeah. uh, how do we really take advantage of the fact that it's always on, always logged in as you, uh, to help provide really awesome experiences to people? Yeah, whereas, I mean, on the other hand, Twitter was designed from the beginning, sure. presuming the mobile affordances, to use your terminology, yeah, sure. which is why the 140 character is tied to the right. you know, um, limit that text messaging uh, will, will allow you, um, right. which is, I think, 160, 160. and there was 20 yeah. left for director, directory sort of thingies. So what did you announce today? So well, as, a, as a result of kind of focusing on mobile, for the past year and a half, we've been investing a lot into mobile messaging, right? And when we take a look at these computers in our pockets, they're perfectly suited for that. Like I said, like always on, they're pushable, uh, logged in as you. Um, and we've noticed that people have wanted more than what SMS can provide, right? So we built Facebook Messenger, launched it. We've launched uh, about seven updates in the last year. Um, and uh, all these features that we built are trying to t take advantage of the, the new technology, things like group messaging, location, sending pictures, emoji, just basically richer expression and richer communication. So up until today, uh, we had, there are two fundamental assumptions that were changing. One, uh, you had to be a Facebook user. You had to have a Facebook account to use Messenger. We're changing that today. Two, Messenger was primarily for messaging between you and your friends, and we're also changing that today. So what we're launching today is essentially the ability to quickly um, sign up for Messenger and start using Messenger without a Facebook account, with just your phone number. You download the app, you click it, you enter your first and last name, and boom, we take a look at your contacts, we know exactly who is also on Messenger, and who's also using the app, and you can start messaging with them for free using all the features that we've built. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal, too, in that you've developed a product that is not just for Facebook users, That's per correct. se. I mean, you're making yeah. them a new kind of user, but um, I guess I, I want to segue later to a different part of that question, but why does Facebook care about making messaging available to people who are not otherwise part of Facebook? Um, and this goes back to kind of the mission that Mark set out for the company and that, that pretty much all of us kind of at the company really, really believe in, which is um, we want to let people connect with each other. Right? and just feel uh, like they're just more in constant communication, that they know what's going on. And Facebook Newsfeed is a good way of doing that ambiently. Kind of These are things that are shared. But messaging has always been a big part of the Facebook uh, ecosystem. It's always been a big part of the product. The idea of having a private conversation with someone is really great. The, the idea of being able to coordinate a birthday party over messages is awesome. Right? Um, and so for us, it was a natural extension of like you look at these phones that we're trying to design for, uh, and what are they good for? And you look at sort of what's really good uh, uh, use cases of Facebook today, and we said we have to bring these things together. We have to really give people more than the types of messaging that they have today on the phone, which, again, with the SMS uh, protocol, it's been around for about 20 years. Uh, it's designed for these old phones that we uh, used to have, these little T9 phones that you used to carry around with a little nine-button keypad, uh, and they don't take advantage of all the location features, the touchscreen, the rich kind of communication, the, the picture-taking. Um, that today's phones have, and that's why we want to invest in it. Well, you know, ever since the IPO, all everybody seems to want to talk about regarding Facebook is how much money you're going to make and when. Uh, and I, I know that, that has, you did some interviews about this with the press, and you were telling me that they were very interested in that yeah. side yeah. of this. So quickly, how is this going to help Facebook make more money? So you're going to ask me the same question. Oh, well, I'm not going <laughs> to ask it the same way, I hope. We'll get yeah. to them. No, no, it's great. I think um, just, just to, it's important to understand that we built these features as the Com Apps team. We built features to really uh, 
bring people closer together and give them really awesome product experiences. That's our number one priority. And that's what we want to do here is we want to make it so that you could message people who are currently Facebook users and give them a really easy way to sign up. That was the primary mechanism. Yeah. Now, of course, um, there are parts of uh, the service that we do monetize. There's the main Facebook app, there's Newsfeed, uh, there's the desktop site. And one thing I didn't mention about a mobile messaging strategy is that we are truly cross-platform, right? And what that means is we, work, we have an app for Android, an app for iOS. We have an app for BlackBerry. We have a bunch of apps for feature phones, for Facebook for every phone. We also have desktop, which is really great to be able to start a conversation on the web and take it on the go when you're kind of out and about. Um, so, you know, there are clearly more people who, monetize, or who, um, who message uh, will cause more engagement in other parts of the site, but that's not our primary focus, but there are second order effects. But you did today just really announce an Android app, right? But you're, right. all the others are going to come in close sequence yep. Yep. We're behind. Them. Yep, that's right. And, and, and so, you know, another question that I'm sure people have asked you, which I didn't ask you in prepping, but I think I know the answer is, mm -hmm you're not going to be gathering data about these users in the way that you do on Facebook users initially, or are you? These users are, are, are signing up for Messenger to use Messenger. They're, they're signing up to talk to their friends one-on-one -on -one privately. Um, these people, we're not kind of opening up the ability to post or anything. This is all based on So you're not going to analyze their behavior and then use that in any kind of marketing targeting? No, we're, we're focused on just messaging. Okay, yeah. and so... And there are no ads in Messenger. I mean, so just so. to reiterate, I mean, I think... Frankly, I, in my understanding of what your priorities are long term, it does make sense. But you're basically saying that there's not a near term monetization goal as part of this launch per se. Well, yeah, the near term focus is basically helping people connect on their phones, right? Because right. there's, a, there's a real need there where we see that people are, are, are wanting to have different apps that, uh, um, that let you communicate uh, in a better way than SMS. Right, but there are two, I mean, there are two, having thought about this since I knew what was coming, uh, yeah. there are two ways that I can think of where it helps Facebook. Sure. One is obviously it's some form of an on ramp for people who, for whatever reason, have not chosen to or not known to sign up for Facebook, particularly in the developing world, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is where you're initially launching this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a pathway into Facebook, presumably, but it's also a way to increase the usage of existing members because it gives them more people with whom to communicate from inside to outside, right? I, I think both of those things are, are, are roughly true. I think that um, uh, the definition of, of uh, what a Facebook user is I, it, it's hard to say because, you know, we as a company, and you know this, we, we, we're really focused on making sure that we bring enough, a uh, lot of just connectivity to the world, right? Getting people so they would be able to, to, to feel connected even though, or, sorry, in ways that they weren't previously able to do so. Um, and for a lot of people on these phones, it's just messaging. So we're focusing on that first. But you're right, eventually it could, you know, lead to maybe they want to try other parts of the Facebook product. Maybe they want to try to post a status or, or share a photo album. Um, and there will eventually get to ways of, of letting them do that. But, you know, our goal today Day is to make it so that messaging is number one. Well, another thing that, that we talked about in prepping for this is that, you know, currently in most of the world, in order to sign up for Facebook, you do it with an email address. Sure. But there's a lot of people who don't have email That's addresses. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the, the study is showing that, like, the younger demographics, I think uh, 6 percent of, of, of teens use email daily, whereas 63 percent of teens use texting daily. It's clearly the, the shift of sort of preferred mechanism for private communication has, has begun and is in full swing. And you told me, I think, that there, there, are, young, there are young people, teenagers, who yeah. sign up for email. That's right. That's, just you know, finish I mean, I mean, this is an interesting thing when we kind of like do a lot of user studies to understand kind of how people, uh, um, uh, how people use Facebook. And one of the things we found, I believe this is two years ago, where there was an anecdotal story of uh, someone who didn't have an email address and signed up for, I believe, a Hotmail or Gmail email address just so they can sign up for Facebook. Just so they could just, get into just Facebook. Just so they can get into yeah. Facebook. And then after yeah. that, it's like that's where they, what the, the service they use to communicate. So, so um, the carriers, I, I was just reading, in the, yesterday just happens to have been the 20th anniversary of the text message. That's right. And I, I happen to have been reading in the FT over the weekend a little thing in the Lex column, which actually said that there's $100 billion dollars in carrier revenue driven annually by texting. So should they be worried about that, given what you're doing here? Well, we're, we're, we work really closely with carriers around the world. Um, and I think um, 
if you take a look at just uh, just a lot of different uh, carriers and how people use data plans, a lot of it is used through Facebook, right? It's it's a lot about just like there's a lot of uh, I mean I walk around the streets of France. You know, I was telling you yesterday I'd be on the metro and people would be like using Messenger or using uploading a photo on Facebook. Um, so there's clearly a lot of engagement. There's a lot of sort of uh, uh, good that's being that's being produced there. Um, again, like we have a very good, close relationship with carriers, and actually with today's announcement, we're actually working with two carriers, one in India and one in Indonesia, to pr to provide a reduced rate of uh, data plan for just people who want to use Messenger. So does that mean you're helping to subsidize that in effect, or uh, how does that work? It's something that the carriers choose to do. So again, like because we work closely with the carriers, we tell them what's what's coming up and the thing, the, you know, the trends we're seeing and how people are using uh, Facebook in, in various ways. Um, and you know, they decided that they wanted to, to to have a promotion that said, well, you can use Facebook Messenger for this reduced rate. So I mean. I think a lot of this uh, partnership stuff is just an ongoing thing where we, we keep in very close contact with not just operators but also OEMs uh, to make sure that we're bringing the best possible experience to, to our collective users. And, and, and I guess there's a number of things about this we haven't talked about yet, but one is obviously that it's sort of a rich media kind of messaging, right. not limited to 140 characters, right. 160 characters. Uh, it's basically a pretty fully functional communications tool. And, and yep. Is there any textual length, for example? No, not not that it, not nothing that's significant. Uh, I mean, like the stories that we hear, and actually a story that I'll tell you that uh, happened on my ski trip um, about a year ago. Uh, we were just kind of uh, eight of us, college friends. We went to Tahoe to to go skiing, and and um, someone picked up and started a messenger thread, and it was great because we were all able to kind of group message together. And uh, messenger has this awesome functionality where, with each message, you can choose to attach a location or not, right? Um, and by virtue of doing so, we were able to know people would be like, oh, hey, I'm just leaving San Francisco now. Uh, or I'm just leaving now. And we could see that it's attached, you know, sent near San Francisco. So we had a sense of like, okay, that car is that far behind. Uh, you know, we're, we're already at the cab and we shouldn't wait for them to, 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 to eat dinner, for example, right? Um, but also just the, the, the idea of having scene state is really awesome too. So that same, um, same trip, we were able to um, say, hey, let's meet at the bottom of the, the mountain at 4.30, and immediately we could see everyone who had seen the message. So I knew that if I headed to the bottom of the mountain at, at, at 7.30, even though no one had replied, I knew that they'd all seen it, and I wasn't going to be the only one there, right? So it's, it's pretty cool to have a, a richer form of communication that's beyond, it's, that has the metadata with the location, but also scene state, but just the whole sense of presence is very different compared to just traditional text. So, I mean, because Facebook Messenger is so much richer than traditional yeah. texting, uh, and because you're focusing this so much on developing world countries at right. the outset. Is it right to think of this as basically a way to give much richer communications yes. functionality to people who've literally not had access to that at all up yes. to now? Yeah, at least yes. in the intro. Yeah, I mean, I and then yes, ultimately, yeah. we it's will be safe. able to communicate with our, our Luddite friends who wouldn't sign up for Facebook, but that's not the primary yeah, there are just a, a bunch of people in the world who just have access to mobile phones and they want to uh, connect with their friends. And, the, and the, the best way to do that is through messages, and that's what we're providing. Yeah, and, and you know, I will say one thing from the historical perspective that's interesting. You know, there's been a deep connection to messaging from Facebook's even earliest pre-embryonic days because Adam D'Angelo, who was Mark's friend from high school, who was at Caltech uh, about nine months before, almost a year before Mark launched Facebook, right. had built something called BuddyZoo, mm -hmm. which was a way to list all of your AIM uh, friends and your contacts on AOL Instant Messenger and then have other people do that and then see who you shared in common. And it was a surprisingly successful service, which Mark was deeply influenced by in designing Facebook. So. Some, and, and he was, of course, a heavy AIM user at the time himself. And right. it, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of logic to this. Um, but I will say, my impression is that Wall Street will not believe you, or even me, well, not me either. I mean, I'm just, but I would agree with you that this is the way Mark, in particular, who yes. is the you know, unchallenged. Un, uh, uh, well, I was almost going to say Fuhrer, but probably that's not the right word. But oh, he, is, yeah. he is the unacknowledged, uh, the absolutely, uh, doesn't have to be acknowledged, ruler of everything. He can make any decision unilaterally, and his thinking is still to make the world more open and connected, more than it is 
increase short-term revenue and profit. And it's not just his thinking. It's pretty much just the, 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 all the product managers, all the engineers of the, of the company. Um, we have just stayed focused and you know, keep on building the products that we think um, people really want. And that's what we've done since the IPO. Of course, there is now a, a, a monetization piece in every product team, right? Which that's another recent change. I mean, it don't, you know, product teams and the monetization side are more integrated, right? So, so we think of ourselves as a kind of a holistic ecosystem, right? And um, the, uh, again, like I said, like, you know, we can, at, in the Com Apps team, we can have the luxury of creating some pretty beautiful photo viewing experiences on the web or um, some uh, awesome location features. And, 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 and from that, we're able to, you know, potentially think about um, how, what do people need and what do people want? Where's the future? And as long as we're creating value for people, there's just value to be kind of exchanged in different ways, right? And so Newsfeed is a great example of this. Like, we provide a ton of value by distributing information uh, via this channel. Um, people, I mean, again, I walk around France, people are just kind of, you know, checking their Newsfeed as they're waiting for the, uh, for the metro. Um, and uh, uh, that is, again, if there's value there, there's also value for us to be able to help businesses connect more with their, uh, with their, uh, their, their customers. So, so the countries that, the, well, first of all, the intention is to roll this thing out globally sure. yeah. by when, roughly? Um, it's, I mean, it's hard to say because we, with all of our uh, rollouts, we, we look at the data really, really closely, and we also listen to a lot of feedback before we kind of roll it out. So we're starting with um, Australia, Venezuela, uh, India, um, uh, Argentina, and there's one more that I'm forgetting. You said South Africa, didn't uh, you tell India, me that? Before? South Africa, and South yeah. Africa, that's right. Those five countries, we're starting with that today, and then we're going to kind of uh, learn more about how people use it, and then as we kind of get the bugs out and as we kind of figure out all the right flows, we'll kind of broaden, broaden out that rollout. And it's just Android now, but how soon would iOS be launching that? Uh, it'll be, you know, we're working on it, and we'll kind of, it, we'll, it's another thing that we do here is that we've moved from uh, a sort of, a feature-based release cycle for all of our mobile applications to a fixed time release cycle. So every six weeks now, we're on a six-week cadence. So every six weeks, we'll be launching a new set of features, whichever ones are ready, right? So that way, um, every six weeks, our users can expect something new is going to happen. Even if it's just something small as like a, 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 a few bug fixes, there's going to be some update that comes out every six weeks or so. So we'll kind of see whenever that's ready, it'll launch in one of the cadence. And when cycles. it will be on feature phones too, but right, but but yeah. how is that going to work? Because you won't be able to have that full rich functionality on a feature phone. Um, right? So it, a lot of people actually access uh, Facebook through feature phones. I think the stat that, that you'll find interesting is that every single day, Facebook is accessed by seven thousand different types of devices. Um, and you know, really? really? Yes, absolutely. 7,000 7, different types of devices. Yes, every exactly. Day. And so a lot of them come from the M site. Some, some of them come from the sort of uh, uh, the free version of Facebook without, uh, that doesn't use much data. Um, but people are accessing it from very, various different technologies. And our goal is to enable as many people to access it as possible. So you know, we have a team working on feature phone stuff. We have a team also for messaging. We also have a team working on uh, the M site for messaging as well. And those features kind of keep on rolling out as soon as we have them ready. So, so I guess another question that's tied to that previous one mm -hmm. is, how big a deal is the developing world in your product evolution thinking at this point? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, uh, Mark's vision has always been grand. And I remember when I first joined the company, it's like I was really inspired by it, and I still am, because we have so much work to do, right? We announced, you know, uh, 1 billion uh, uh, monthly active users, and that was a good milestone for us. But there's still a lot of people out there that are, you know, not using the, the web, or, but are using mobile phones that want to be connected uh, better to, to their friends. Um, so it's, it's huge. It's like a huge opportunity for us. Uh, it's a huge untapped sort of potential, and we're, we're looking to build in that direction. I mean, is that, is it's, that like in every conversation? Kind of, I mean, because there's sort of two fundamentally different communities. These, you know, people mm -hmm. like most of us in this room who walk right. around with extraordinarily powerful, quite expensive, relative, very expensive devices, yeah. relatively yeah. speaking. And then there's the mass of humanity who are many of whom are just getting on the mobile network now. So, so to answer your question, every team thinks about it. So our, our, the messages team thinks about it. We actually have a bunch of feature phone devices that are just hanging around the office that anyone can pick up and test their features on. Um, so it's a part of the ethos of the company now because we're a mobile company that we have, uh, we actually have a mobile library where you can go and check out any type of phone that you want uh, to just check to see if something works or just even carry out around a phone and kind of get a feeling of how a lot of people in the world use the mobile technologies. 
Okay. Um, I guess another way to think of, uh, that I'm curious to hear you talk about what you're doing generally and yeah. this announcement and how it, it fits into that is, I mean, if, if we think of the evolution of Facebook broadly, mm -hmm. is how, how should we think about that? And how central should we have the word communications as we're kind of trying to kind of parse the, and, and predict the future moves that Facebook will be making? Yeah, I think communication, I think you were telling me this earlier, that it, it's actually, um, there are many different ways to communicate. Like, communication is not just picking up a phone and calling someone, right? It's not just, uh, you know, talking to someone face to face, but just also, like, newsfeed is also communication. The fact that I post a picture uh, last night, it was communication to say, hey, like, I'm in, I'm in France and it's beautiful here. Um, there's ways to kind of make... Uh, you know, once I learned from a, 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 a sort of a, a linguistic professor uh, at school where it's like communication is, is actually, I don't know if it's true or not, the root of the, the term is to make common, to make common knowledge between two people. So it's a, to getting on the same page, right? So, um, you know, messaging is a way to do that, but newsfeed is and so is photos and, and Instagram. All these products are, are, are helping people just kind of share their experiences a little bit better. So, I mean, that's kind of central to Facebook's yeah, whole self-definition. Yeah, absolutely. Is how do we find more and more new ways to improve that finding of commonality? It's, it's the flowing, yeah, exactly, the flowing of information so that we all have the same type of bits at the end of the day, right? And timeline is even a big part of this too, right? What I, and of course, the user has, com I have complete control over what I share. I shared a, a picture publicly last night. I shared some stuff just to close friends before. Um, and uh, the timeline is kind of this aggregation of like, what is it, mean to be me, right? And how do I want to present that to, out to people? So um, I guess, you know, people are always trying to figure out what's next for Facebook. But, you know, when you look a little bit further down the pike beyond the products that you currently have in process, right. what, and especially with this communication theme that you are responsible for right. inside the company, what what are the craziest, most exciting things that you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, "Wow, we could try that"? I mean, that's interesting. So I, I'm going to kind of give you answer the question in terms of a philosophy that we have at Facebook and how we think about building products. And maybe this will help answer the, the, your question. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, uh, you know, whenever I give a talk to the new hires uh, coming in, I talk about how um, at Facebook we always start with people, and we always think about. You know, we can learn so much from the way that we as, a, as humanity have kind of communicated for thousands of years, right? Um, and the kind of social constructs that we have, and we actually take inspiration for those to build our products. Um, a good example of this is, is a friend request. And in real life, in the way that friendship works is that I give you some trust, you give me some trust, and we have mutual trust, and we just agree to enter a relationship. And that there, you know, you have the two-way friend request model, which is essentially a digital mapping of what happens in the analog world. So there's a lot of that stuff going on where we take cues from the way that people are actually interact and build products on top of that, right? So that's kind of, I'm trying to answer the spirit of your question, which is, you know, you can think about the way that we're interacting today and how can technology kind of augment that experience. That's what we're trying to do, right? We're not trying to, we're trying to build technologies that augment the human experience, not just replace it. Um, and uh, so I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about like, well, like, wouldn't it be cool if I could be better connected to my cousins, right? Or, you know, what are some of the ways that, and I, 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 there are ideas, but I'm not going to share with you on the stage. Um, but there are ideas of just like, you know, looking at how uh, people actually behave and actually connect with each other. What types of inspirations can you draw? Um, an example, a good example of this is actually Open Graph. This is something I'm really excited about. Um, the idea that so much data is going to be uh, recorded and, and help me kind of uh, uh, sort of put into a, a report for me, right? And Spotify is a great example of this. As I started listening to all music from Spotify, even in the car, uh, you know, I do offline mode, all this other stuff on the plane. So um, the ability for me to go back and take a look, like that is the, that's when I discovered, you know, that one band, right? Or this is when I started listening to Lupe Fiasco's new album or whatever it may be. Um, it, it really helps me understand uh, sort of my past. And I think that the open graph is just opens up a really rich platform for a lot of this type of data to, to become very useful. But you're not going to things like holographic communication, which I was sort of hoping you would have. Oh, okay. I mean, just for example, <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's got to be some really amazing things that can be possible. Yeah. I mean, if Facebook's self-definition is to improve the sort of bandwidth of human communication, you yeah. know, between everybody, yeah. um, 
friends and other. Uh, I mean, there's almost no bounds to how that might be digitally intermediated, right? Sure. I mean, I, I have to say that I love the idea of physical sensors that are able to help us track. I love my Fitbit, right? Um, and I have a withing scale that helps me kind of just like, I love charts and data. So there's a lot of, uh, I think one of the movements you're seeing is just uh, uh, hardware that's going to be uh, not just oh, things that I press and interact with me, but basically hardware that helps me understand myself better. Yeah, it's interesting. You also mentioned briefly that you give a talk to all Facebook yeah. incoming employees. Why do you do that? Why uh, do you, I mean, there's only a couple people who do that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and we do that because we care Bo about... We, Bosworth does that too, yeah, right? Boz, yeah, Boz and I do that. Um, there's actually a, a, a lot of people do it. Shrep does it. Chris does it. Um, I mean, those we, people have a long time before they start working, but okay. But, but yeah, every Monday morning, we'll kind of get in a room with the new hires and we'll kind of give them a talk of how we view the company. And it's, it's really important to us because, honestly, growing the, uh, scaling up the company culture and our fundamental, what we believe in, is, is, is important for, for our, our, uh, our, our company growing, as, uh, growing up, right? Okay. So every, basically everyone who, who comes in hears a product talk of how, we, how do we build products that I give. Uh, they hear, hear a vision talk from, from Chris. Uh, and they hear sort of uh, engineering talk from Shrep. So everyone, it doesn't matter if you're in HR, in recruiting, or an engineer, or a product manager, you kind of you kind of try to get as much of the company culture as you can from the people who've sort of been around for a while. Um, and that, again, scaling that up is going to be very important to us. Okay, and the central message you try to convey to them about how Facebook uniquely builds product is, it, and then we got to go. Start with people. It's start with people. You, you know, we don't start with algorithms and figure out how do, we, how do people want to use this. We start with people. What do people need? What do people want? Where's the future going? And then we build technologies on top of that. Okay, and with that, we've run out of time. But thank you so much, thank Peter. You. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. David. David. Uh, are you having fun? Yeah, great. I love Lua. It's uh, great. It's fantastic. Uh, t tell us about your conference, Techonomy. Oh, Techonomy. Yeah, I'm in the conference business, too. We just had a conference. It was two and a half weeks ago in Arizona, which is a smaller, more retreat-type event. But basically, Techonomy is all about the role of technology in business and social progress. So technology's role, not the technology itself. So um, my mic is being twiddled with. But... Uh, so anyway, that's what we do. We bring together a, a group of very senior leaders, and we spend two days in the desert talking about how technology is changing everything. And it's pretty exciting. Yeah. And you, you got to come. You, you were going to come, and then you bagged it this year. I'm, that, that's I'm, right. I'm I, was, you. I was preparing this, this I know. Small when, thing. when it's immediately before somebody's <laughs> conference, I know how that is. You know how that is. Yeah. So, but I'll come next year. Uh, you better. We'll see you tomorrow again. You're going to be. We'll actually... I'm, I'm here with the Microsoft guy tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you, David. Thanks. Thanks.